Welcome back, YouTube viewers and West Clocks fans across the country and world. Uh, we're going to get started on this clock. This is a West Clocks Big Ben Style 4 Chime Alarm. And this is one of the earlier uh, models. Uh, not so early that the uh, winding key doesn't have the... Um, isn't directly connected to the uh, barrel. This one has the gearing. Um, so this is still uh, early enough though that it's got the green paint instead of being ivory. I think I showed you this clock. This was just a little bit earlier. This is the first version of the Style 4 introduced um, uh, 1934. And as you can see the winding key connects directly. There's no you, this is the way to tell for one thing it's closer to the setting knobs and also since there's no gearing there's no lash you see the lash there there's no lash because it's connected directly anyway I originally said I was going to do both of these simultaneously I don't think I'm going to do that now I'm just going to do this this clock they're both the same so it really doesn't matter I'll, I might do a video of the um, when I get the movement out on this one, though, I'll do a video of it, maybe, if I can remember. Sometimes I'll just tear a, p a clock apart and not video it, but I'm going to video this one. Anyway, the first thing to do is the uncase the um, movement. And we'll start with um, the case. And these screws you do not have to remove. You just back them out. About a turn and a half is what I like to do. Maybe if I need to, if I need to back it off a little bit more, I will. And we're listening to Joseph C. Smith in the background. I'm sure there'll be a copyright match, but these are non-monetized videos, so it's not going to bother me at all. Unless, unless the video is blocked in some markets. Well, might have to fiddle around a little bit getting, the, um, getting it loose. And you can see how this is held in place. Might have to back these off a little bit more. You can tell which ones are hanging sometimes. Unfortunately, sometimes the dial glass wants to hang up a little too. Just watch that it doesn't scratch the dial up. This has got a really, really nice looking dial on it. And this clock wasn't running. It's running now. That's kind of crazy. At this point... The clock is very easy to handle, so let's take the hands off. And this has got a real nice dial on it. I don't want to mess the dial up. Okay. So there's the alarm indicator hand. Now I've been thinking about this, about ways to get the um, second, the minute hand off. Um, and there's a couple different ways that you could do this. You could take and um, use another pair of pliers there to um, that aren't too thick to get to get the uh, some elevation there and then use um, another pair of pliers like this you see that's a little bit too tall we don't just want to lever the hand off against the um, hour hand because uh, I don't want to damage the hour pipe hour hand pipe because it's just uh, made out of Babbitt metal the hour hand pipe is made out of Babbitt metal I'm looking for a pair of pliers that are thin. Uh, these are magnetic. Trying to get 
under, let's just do it this way. There we go. And see, I was able to lever the hand off like that instead of just twisting it off like I did on the other hands. And uh, you do want to be careful, though, prying against the dial. And then the hour hand will just pull off like that. Okay. Now the dial should lift straight off. And you can see the dial's in good shape. Yeah, you can see it's just sort of flicking along there a little bit. Chime alarm movements are very neat. Very nice nickel-plated brass plates. There's a lot of oil on this one. It doesn't look real dirty, though. I mean, it is kind of dirty. Okay, from here, we're going to take the knobs off. The winding keys, I mean. And they just unscrew. They're both uh, female thread. And unscrew the alarm on off knob. Now at this point we want to separate the uh, rear case from the front case. There's some small screws here. There's three screws. I have a lot of screwdrivers here that I've magnetized and since I work on both clocks and tape recorders and things I also have a uh, demagnetizing tool that's used for demagnetizing uh, tape heads that also works great for demagnetizing the screwdrivers so sometimes um, depending on what I'm working on I want the screwdriver to be magnetized and sometimes I don't want it to be magnetized. And uh, we'll start out movement sitting there. <clears throat> There's some dust washers on the inside here. There's some uh, Belleville tension washers. These are identical from one side to the other. And then there's these washers here, and they're not identical. And it, they're gone now, but there should be a flat rubber washer inside of each of these. Um, here's the remains of the flat rubber washer on this one. This one here was installed backwards, but there should be a rubber washer there on that one also. There's the tension washer. Go ahead and place the setting knob back on. I'm going to set the dial glass and dial and hands like I did on the other clock. Put everything in the dial glass and put the dial on here and set that off to the side. For safekeeping where it's all out of the way and we'll put the case out of the way too. And now we want to remove the movement from the uh, front half of the case. Now, I don't think these screws are magnetic because they are... The washer, I think, is magnetic because it's steel, but these screws are nickel-plated brass. Now, several people I've noticed on the internet have remarked that there's no replacements for these rubber grommets. There actually is. You're just not 
thinking um, electrical grommets are um, suitable replacements, and that's what I've used. Um, used to be able to buy them at Radio Shack. You could buy an assortment of grommets in different sizes. Uh, but nowadays, you have to order them from Mauser Electronics or Newegg or Newark or any of those places will have them. Just measure if the old grommets are in decent shape. Take the movement and set it. It's just a little too small to sit on this drawer. I might have to grab a different drawer. I'll have to grab one of the, the narrower uh, parts doors to set the movement on. Uh, but back to these grommets. If the existing grommets are in good shape, uh, you can reuse them if you want. Obviously, if they're rock hard, they won't perform like they would have when they were new. But you can use them and measure them to, um, to order the new ones. If the grommets are gone, measure the thickness of this material here, the inside diameter of the hole, and the outside diameter of the screw, and also how long this is, and use that information when selecting the new grommets, because there's a gazillion of those things to choose from. And I don't know if I still have any grommets in my assortment of grommets I bought at Radio Shack years ago. Because so I've used a lot of them in Baby Ben's. I've also used some of them for their um, intended electronics use. And that's um, to protect wires where they go through holes in metal. So the um, winders on a Big Ben chime alarm, on this style at least, are the same sizes as the alarm winder on a um, Big Ben loud alarm. See, it fits onto both. However, the click that is used on the alarm side is not of a variety that will allow you to let the alarm side down you will have to um, run the alarm to let that spring down. Oops, see I had my finger there, that's not a very good idea. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to do is um, let the uh, time side down. I can do that pretty easily here with my homemade uh, key adapter. I made this from an old winding key. It's one of the few specialty items you'll see me use. don't want to uh, put too much pressure on that click holding it off because I don't want to deform the click spring and then check here to see if it's let down or not and I see the date stamp is January 23rd 1935 Okay, it's let down. So unscrew the let down adapter. And using a screwdriver here, we will go ahead and remove the screws. That hold the time main bridge in place.
And here is the great wheel. And mainspring. That feels nice and tight. Everything feels in good shape on this. So that's good. Um, this barrel is the exact same size as the time side mainspring barrel on a two key baby bin. But according to the West Clocks information that I have, the mainsprings are not the same. Uh, I have the feeling that the um, mainspring for the chime alarm is a little bit thicker because the great wheel on a Big Ben chime alarm is a little bit larger than the great wheel on a Baby Ben 2 key, which means the um, turning effort or torque at the perimeter of the wheel is going to be slightly less on with this larger wheel than it would be with the baby bin uh, great wheel also coincidentally gives you a slightly longer running time uh, because the rest of the gearing is the same and I'll point out the differences as we go along okay piece of rubber All right. Let's at this point let's remove the um, um, balance wheel. And this hairspring doesn't look too bad. I can see that someone's had this apart before and gotten it kind of crooked. This just uses a conventional taper pin to hold it in place. And one of the secrets to working on these that you, I might not have talked much in doing the other video, to not bending the hairsprings is really to try to avoid really handling them. I don't pull on them or tug on them or anything. I just sort of tease them and sort of manipulate them. Um, I don't want to... Um, to really risk damaging them in any way and you see that that one popped out of the slot in the uh, regulator and out of the stud just by backing the balance wheel off in that direction and then so I move that either there or there wherever it's out of the way the most and um, this one has the uh, regulator on it so I'm not going to back that one off because I don't want to um, disturb the adjustment of the tension on that I'm not you know it doesn't need to be torn apart that that much I'm just gonna hold the balance wheel that way with one finger and loosen off the um, other screw like that and then remove the balance wheel okay And you can see the hairspring is bent slightly there at the end, and that's why it didn't want to pin straight. That's why it was uh, crooked like it was. I might try to straighten that out. I might not. It depends on how well the clock runs after it's reassembled. But that looks to be not perfect, but definitely usable. All right, with that out of the way, we can loosen this nut off. And remove the Geneva stop. It's a very interesting adaptation of a Geneva mechanism used to get the chime alarm effect going on on this. There's a um, 
the um, arbor that the hammer is attached to is spring-loaded. And um, this would be the lifting. So this is sort of adapted from the mechanism of a striking clock. This is the lifting cams. And in the chime mode, it's pushed forward so that it's only being lifted by these three here. And in um, the loud alarm part, the spring pushes it back to where it's lifted by every turn. See how that works. Anyway, if the uh, pin was still on there, as it unwinds, it will advance this a step at a time going around until it finally jams over here and stops it. This is a sort of an, adapt an adaptation of a stop work. And when you wind it, it goes back around like this and forces it back. And then this little ramp here is what... Uh, See the spring is winding down. Sort of helped it along a little bit. Don't put too much pressure on it though. You don't want to um, damage the uh, Babbitt metal uh, gear wheels. There are a total of five arbors in the um, alarm train. There's the great wheel, the second wheel which ha carries the lifting cams, the third wheel, the fourth wheel, and the fly fan. Um, for a while I was toying with the idea of adapting one of these um, movements to be a full time and strike movement, but um, quickly decided against it because the gear ratios aren't right. Let's see, we're getting... pretty low there, power-wise. Alright, see there's no power left there anymore, so now we can take this apart. These screws are the same size screws that are used in a Baby Ben clock for holding the bridges on in one of those clocks. And as if to prove that this is a, um, a Big Ben movement, there's a pillar nut that has to be removed before that bridge can be taken off. <coughs> okay. And you can kind of see how that mounts on there. The the bridge is is raised and the spring sort of sits in a place here. Okay, comes out like this, and you can see the peculiar arrangement of the clicks. There would be no way to raise all three clicks at once to let it down in the conventional manner. That's sort of the Achilles heels of a lot of um, clocks that use this sort of setup. A lot of um, American clocks in the 30s 
use this setup on the time side of all places, and so it's rather annoying. The only way to let one of those down really is to um, bring the plates apart slightly and remove the verge and balance wheel, and let the um, let the gears run down at an alarming speed to uh, let it down. Okay, there is the uh, great wheel for the alarm side and the loop end mainspring for the alarm side. Okay, I'm trying to do this all in one take, disassembling the movement here. Next step is to disassemble the uh, alarm trip mechanism. And take that off. See, that wasn't very tight, it was just sort of finger tight. And you'll notice this is the same style of nut that was used for the nut that hold the stop works um, on. It's rounded with a small hex at one end. And then the rest is just conventional um, Big Ben style setup. There's a, a washer with a double D shaped hole and then the tension washer and then it's hard to see but between the plates there is a washer there just like on the uh, on the Big Ben loud alarms and it's probably going to want to hang up a little bit I think what we'll use is a pair of pliers to help push down on that to get it started off of there. There we go. It's loose now. And remember, this washer, the large washer with the double D hole, goes on the inside of the movement plates. And then there's the alarm wheel with the cam and the trip staff. <clears throat> Next, before we separate the plates, there's a nut here. We'll remove this nut and then we'll remove the, um, the cam. And, oops. Very unprofessional of me. Good thing I'm an amateur. I had a moment there. I couldn't remember if that was a um, left-hand thread or not. Now, this does thread on, though. Okay. <clears throat> and then we'll remove the alarm spring there's the alarm spring now the um, the hammer is carried it on its own little bridge here with some screws and you'll see one screw is recessed in a little um, well there very nice very small blued screws I think these screws are the same size screws that are used in the pocket watches for holding the uh, pillars to the plates And so, as you can see, this comes apart as an assembly here. Mm. 
Okay, it looks like the other thing that's left to do is remove the knob. <clears throat> we'll have to try to lever this off. Okay. Oops, dropped it. There's the knob. That's for setting the time. And here you can see the remains of one of the uh, rubber washers that's on these metal washers for excluding dust from the movement case. I'm very impressed with the lengths that West Clocks went to for dust proofing these cases. Um, I really got a, a attention to detail is astounding on these older clocks. It really is. You can see the old rubber there. And that's something I might try. Don't know if I'll have parts ordered quickly enough to uh, to be done as part of this restoration pr rebuild project. It's not really a restoration to buy new um, rubber washers, but the place to order them from is McMaster Car. Um, that's where I would try to purchase those from. All right. Now we have these rather, uh, almost comically large, um, pillar nuts here to loosen up. And there's no reason to take this one off, so I'm not going to do that. And I like that um, West Clocks, on these larger movements, used five pillars with an extra pillar in the um, escapement area there to help uh, reinforce that and make it more substantial. And you can see the way these are made. So again, the countersunk side goes towards the movement plate. Right, I'm not taking that one off, remember. Can we zoom out? Oh. And you can see what parts stayed with what plates here pretty easily. We have the lever. This is the same lever that's used in a baby bin. The escape wheel. This is the same escape wheel that's used in the, a baby bin. The fourth wheel. This is the same fourth wheel that's used in a baby bin. This is the same third wheel that's used in a baby bin. The wheel and pinion are the same wheels and pinions that are used in a baby bin, but the arbor is not. This arbor is, is larger. 
There's the alarm second wheel with the threaded drive for the um, uh, cam. The alarm third wheel. The alarm fourth wheel, which is made out of Bakelite so that it's silent running. And the alarm fly. And this is the alarm on off uh, staff. So there's the back plate stripped of all its components. Here's the front plate. Now what I need to do is to remove the shuck pinion. And we could go ahead and remove the hour wheel and, and tube uh, at this point if I wanted to by this little uh, brass wire here that's bent into an S of straightening it out. It'll probably break. Then remove the washer. Then the hour wheel and pipe will come off. And then the minute wheel and pinion um, can be lifted off also. And then I can drive the shuck pinion off without fear of damaging the Babbitt metal hour tube. So I'm going to do that now at this time. As you can see it didn't break off. I might be able to reuse that if it doesn't break when I put it back. Usually though, if it does break, what I just use is a small taper pin. Minute wheel and pinion. And here's the shuck, also known as the cannon pinion. On some clocks, it is an actual cannon pinion. On a, on a movement like this though, um, it's, it can also be called the shuck pinion. And you can see this arbor is, is substantially larger than it would be in a baby Ben clock. <clears throat> okay. Time to get some suitable implements of destruction here to... Pop the shuck pinion off. Move some things around just a little bit. Don't think it actually did anything, did it? come out of place. Started it. For a smaller pair of pliers that fit in there better. As you can see, that's one drawback of using this method is if you're not careful, you will scar it. Um, it might be a good idea when doing this to use some of the um, index paper like this to protect that, just like we do with the dial. So, interesting tip, the shuck pinion on the Big Ben chime alarm is the same size, same pinion as what's used on the lateral arm movements. In fact, the um, motion work interchanges between the two movements. It's the same hour wheel and pipe as on the Big Ben lateral arms. Same 
minute wheel and pinion as on the Big Ben lateral arms. The hands are the same. Uh, that's why this is larger, so that it, you know, Big Ben size parts. This on this end, though, I think is Baby Ben size. And like I said, same wheel, same pinion as what's on the Baby Ben center arbor, just on a larger arbor. Anyway, that's the disassembly of the movement. These parts are going to get cleaned, and um, when they are cleaned, we will reassemble the movement. So this is Oklahoma Bridges with a load of uh, parts now, and thank you for following along, and thank you for watching.